Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today I'm sharing some super cute Easter DIY ideas. For this first project, I picked up these little clothespins. They say doll pins, but they're like vintage clothespins from my Dollar General. I think they were maybe $2 per pack. And the first thing I'm going to do is just drop these down into a little bit of coffee. I want to stain these up as dark as possible, so I'm just stirring them around. And then I think I let them sit for maybe about eight hours. Now, I also learned a little trick from Pinterest if you want to make your wood look really old and vintage drop some of the coffee grinds on top of whatever you are staining with the coffee and this is going to actually leave kind of darker almost black marks all over your pieces of wood now this did work pretty good to leave some darker spots on here you can't really tell in the video but they did have a few more darker spots on them but it wasn't just quite enough for what i was going for so i'm taking some burnt umber acrylic paint i'm just dabbing that onto my finger and dabbing it back onto the plate so that i barely have any on there and and then I'm rubbing this all over these clothespins. Now, once I aged up all of my clothespins, I set these aside to make sure they were fully dry from the coffee and the paint. And then I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree rub-on transfers. And I just picked out a couple. This is like the farmhouse transfers from Dollar Tree. But it has like really cute florals. And there's also some carrots and eggs on there. And I thought this would be perfect perfect for spring so I am just picking some and rubbing these on to my clothespins. This next project is actually inspired by a wood wall art piece I saw at Kirkland's, but I found this frame at my local thrift store and it already has a wood backing for it. So I figured I could use this to do a little bunny silhouette with some florals. Of course, the first thing I wanted to do was paint this frame. So I'm going in with three coats of white chalk paint and I'm only doing the frame. For the bunny template, I just traced out a bunny onto some parchment paper from my computer and just made sure that it fit on that wood piece. Then I traced around that template onto some of Dollar Tree's removable Cricut vinyl so that I could stick this down onto the back of the wood piece. Now, obviously, this piece isn't staying on the back of the wood piece. I'm just using it to get the shape of the bunny. So just make sure that all of your edges are pressed down really tight because we're going to go over this with three coats of the white chalk paint. Then once I had all three coats on and it was completely dry, I was able to just remove that Cricut vinyl. This stuff does work pretty nicely with paint over top of it as far as bleeding goes. There were just a few spots and I was just able to just scratch those off with my little Cricut tool. Now for the floral stencil that I'm going to be using for the inside of the bunny, I actually got this huge pack of floral stencils from Amazon and I just picked one that I really liked and I'm going to go ahead and kind of place that over. It wasn't big enough to go all the way across the bunny, but I'm going to fix that in just a little bit. But first, I did tape this down with a little bit of painter's tape and I'm doing two very light coats of my white chalk paint over top of this stencil. And you may notice I didn't tape the bottom because since we're using the same color white chalk paint that we used on the background, this is just going to blend in if you get some of the stencil down at the bottom. Once I had the first stenciling done, I'm going to remove that, wipe my stencil off, and I flipped it over so that I could do the tail end of the bunny. 
Now this time I made sure that I used the painter's tape to just mark off only the piece that I still needed to do and then once again I just went in with two light coats of my white chalk paint. This next project is inspired by these cute little bunny heads. They have the glasses. I'm sure we've all seen them, but I wanted to try to make a smaller version. So I actually found these finial knobs from my thrift store. They were $2.99, but they were actually half off. So I picked these up and then I picked up one of these little wood cubes from my Dollar Tree. And this is going to be the base for my bunny head. So I did go ahead and draw drill down into the center of this so that I'm able to screw that little knob onto there. I just used some of my burnt umber paint mixed with a little bit of water to stain this. I just put it all over the wood block and then used a paper towel to wipe some of it back off. But I do think this would also look really nice painted the same color as the bunny head. And then once it was dry, I was able to screw that finial knob down into the wood block. Now to make the ears, I'm just going to be using some of my air dry clay. And I'm going to kind of roll this out a little bit thicker than normal because I definitely want these to be substantial enough to hold up on top of the head. Hopefully that makes sense, but basically I want these to be thick enough so that the glue will have a lot of clay to hold on to, if that makes sense. But so once I had this rolled out, I went ahead and just cut two little bunny ears out of there. Then I went back in and I'm just tapping and rubbing the sides down. Then I just used my pinky finger to kind of shape that around it so that it would look like bunny ears. Then I'm going to attach these ears while they're still wet so that I can shape them a little bit more after I super glue these on the top. Here I'm just trying to color match the ears. That knob was kind of an off-white whitewashed color so I'm just mixing up some of my white chalk paint with a little bit of my apple barrel antique white to try to match that color. Then to match the whitewashing I am just mixing up a little bit of my white chalk paint with some water and I'm actually just going to go back over it this entire thing. Now I don't know why I didn't remove this to start with but eventually I did remove it from the wood block and then just rub that paint and water all over this then take a paper towel to wipe some of it off. Now to make the glasses for my bunny I'm just using some of this Dollar Tree floral wire and I cut down two pieces that were about the same size and I'm just twisting those two pieces together to make this a little bit thicker so that the glasses will be more noticeable and then once I get this all twisted I'm actually just using my finger wrapping this around to make the lens part and I don't know if you can tell or not but once I wrap this around my finger right here I'm putting it back through there just to make a little knot for the frames and so it won't slip out of there. And then I just did the exact same thing on the other side to make the second frame. There was a little bit of excess on one of the sides of the frame so I was able to just snip that off. Then I kind of pressed the frames in a little bit on the sides right here so that it will hug the bunny's head. I again just traced out a bunny from my computer onto some parchment paper and cut that down. I made this one a little bit bigger than the other template that I made 
because I want to make a little stuffed bunny with a pocket. So for this, I'm also gonna be using some scrap drop cloth that I already had. Now I just folded this in half, laid my template on it, and then I'm just using a fine point Sharpie to mark all around this bunny template. Now before I cut this out, I did want to use the sewing pins to attach both my pieces together so while I'm cutting it, it won't be moving around or shifting in any direction. And then once I had it all pinned, it just made it so much more easier to cut this out. And as always, to glue this together, I am using some of my Aileen's Fabric Fusion glue. And I'm just doing the top, the sides, and leaving that bottom part open so that I can stuff it later. And as I was gluing this, I did leave maybe a quarter to a half an inch gap at the edges. Then I'll just set that aside for about two hours to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and work on the pocket. So this is just another piece of that drop cloth that came from when I cut the bunny out and you can see here I did fray the edges except for the bottom. To decorate the pocket I'm going to be using some of these stamps that I got from Amazon. If you saw my last video I actually used the butterfly stamps that came with this pack of stamps but for this one I am using a little floral stamp and then I'm going to layer it with one of the frame stamps. Then to add just a little more detail, I'm just using one of those corner stamps in two of the corners. After the glue had dried in the bunny, then I was able to go ahead and stuff this. I'm just using some leftover stuffing that I had from an old pillow. And I'm not putting a ton of stuffing in this because I do want it to kind of be able to stand up and not be overstuffed. And to close the final side, I'm just using some hot glue with my Gorilla Glue glue sticks and then using those same glue sticks to attach the pocket. Then I decided that I kind of wanted it to look like it was stitched even though it's just glued on. So I'm using that fine tip Sharpie again to make little stitch marks around three sides of this. And for the final touches, I'm just adding in some of this Dollar Tree Spanish moss and a few pieces of dry baby's breath that I already had. For this next project, I really loved these mossy concrete rabbits that I saw at Pottery Barn. So I picked up two of these little ceramic bunnies from my thrift store and I thought I could definitely turn these into crumbly concrete mossy bunnies. So although these bunnies did have a little bit of texture, like fur texture, I wanted to just give them more texture and depth. So I'm adding on some Dollar Tree spackling covering both of these completely. Now I made sure that the spackling was completely dry and then I'm going in with some Elephant Gray from Apple Barrel and I'm just kind of patting this all over these bunnies. And once that first coat was dry, I'm gonna go back in, mix some of my white chalk paint with that elephant gray to make a lighter gray color. And I'm gonna pat this over both of these bunnies kind of in random places. Now, while that's still wet, I'm gonna take a damp paper towel with some of my white chalk paint, and I'm gonna pat this all over the bunnies and kind of blend in all of the colors. So you're really just layering different colors of paint and blending those in. You can see here I'm also using my paintbrush that still had a little bit of paint on it just to feather in all of those colors so that they blend nicely together. And this is all just going to help achieve that really aged crumbly cement look that I'm going for. And the final step to really kick up this aged look is I'm going in with a little bit of my Moss Waverly chalk paint 
and I'm gonna dab this along the bottom and anywhere that I think it would get natural moisture or aging, that's where I'm going to put this. And then to add just a little more aging, I'm gonna take some of my antiquing wax and just very lightly brush over some of the places where I put the moss and just blend that in with my finger. Now this next project is inspired by this bunny ears pillow from Kirkland's and as it turned out Dollar Tree actually has this very similar floral fabric so I picked up two of those and then picked up one of the microfiber car towels that they have and here I'm just using some regular printer paper just two pieces taped those together and then traced out a bunny head from my computer. Now I did realize that the ears were just a little too big so I ended up cutting this template down in three pieces so that I could make those ears a little smaller. So once I cut it all out I just kind of pushed those ears down behind the head a little bit and then taped it all back together. So to start I'm actually going to do the floral pieces of fabric first and glue those together but right here I just laid down my bunny head template just to figure out how big I wanted this pillow to be and then I will cut both of of those pieces of fabric down. So to glue this together I'm actually using some of this Aileen's Fabric Fusion and you can see I have both pieces inside out and then I'm just going around three sides of this and gluing it together leaving the four side open. Then I let that dry for about two hours. And then for the bunny head part, I just attached my template to that microfiber cloth using some of these sewing pins and I cut this all out. Now, if you would prefer, you could definitely just trace around this bunny head with a marker or something, but I don't really like using Sharpie on this microfiber cloth because even if you cut close to it, you can sometimes still see the black part. But now once I had it cut out, I am going to use some more of that Eileen's Fabric Fusion to attach this, just working my way from the bottom to the top of the ears. Then all that was left to do was just stuff my pillow. So I'm just using this old pillow that I've had laying around and I'm going to cut that open, take the stuffing out, and then use that to stuff my pillow. And once I had it all stuffed, then I just folded in those edges on the fourth side and glued that together and pinned it down until it was dry. For this project, I'm using some of these ceramic eggs that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and these had initials on the front of them. All I had to do was just take a sanding block to sand those off of there. Then I'm going to go in with three coats of my white chalk paint on both of these. Now recently I ordered some of these frame molds from Amazon and I knew that it would be perfect for this project so I'm going to use this little oval one and some of my air dry clay and I'm going to make two of these for my eggs. Now my original plan was to use some stamps and stamp the center pieces of these. These are some little bird stamps I got from Dollar Tree and then my little Peter Rabbit stamps that I got from Amazon. And you can see here I did go ahead and try it but I ended up not liking the way it looked after I did it. So I do end up cutting those center pieces out and doing something different. So I grabbed my vintage scrapbook paper from Amazon and I found this cute little muffins, crumpets, rolls, and toast ingredients page in there. So I'm just going to use my stamps on here and then I will trace around those with my frame and cut those down. 
Then I'm just using a glue stick to attach these to the front of my eggs. Now you could definitely use a Mod Podge if you wanted to, but I wasn't too concerned about the glue stick holding these on there because right here I'm using some gel super glue to attach the frames and this will also hold that paper down. And finally I'm going in with some of my European gold rub and buff and a stencil brush and I am doing all of the details around the frames and then I'm just kind of patting it all over the egg as well. I am using two of these larger birch wood rounds from Dollar Tree. These were the ones that have the hangings on them, the rope hangings. I just took those off and I'm just using the wood pieces. Then you'll also need a smaller birch wood round. Now this is one from a pack of four that I got at Dollar Tree. And then you'll need some of these new wood biscuits that they have. I'm going to be using five of these. Then I also picked up these little pom-poms to use for a tail. Now since the wood biscuits from Dollar Tree don't have the birch wood edging on them, I did decide to go ahead and give all of these pieces a really light coating of white chalk paint. I even went around the edges of the birch wood pieces and just lightly coated those with white chalk paint as well, just so these could be cohesive. Then once they were all dry, it was time to put this bunny together. So I am taking the smaller wood piece and using some wood glue to attach it to one of the larger pieces. And then I'm using more wood glue to attach the other big piece onto the front side of the bunny. So basically we are sandwiching the head between the two body pieces. So then moving on, we are going to attach those wood biscuit pieces as the ears. I attached one going straight up and then on the other side kind of leaned it back a little bit. Then for one of those wood biscuits, we're going to make that the front paw and it's also going to help to stabilize the bunny. So as I'm gluing this in between those two body pieces, I did stand this up and make sure that I had it where I wanted it so that it could help help stabilize this. Now for the last two biscuits, those are going to be the back feet for the bunny. And again, I am standing this up as I am gluing it to each side to make sure that it is helping the bunny stand on its own. Then finally for this project, I'm using some hot glue to attach one of those little tails. I picked up this gorgeous frame from my local thrift store. Now it definitely wasn't the color that I wanted, so I did just end up taking this outside, spray painting it with some of my white Rust-Oleum spray paint. Then once it was dry, I brought this back inside and I'm just using some painter's tape to tape off that inner frame because I want to use some of my European gold rub and buff to paint this whole piece up. Now I did end up having to use a smaller paintbrush for this in a little bit because I couldn't get into all those little crevices and I really wanted this whole centerpiece to be gold. Once I was all finished, I was able to just remove my painter's tape. And then for this project, I'm going to be using some of these vintage scrapbook pages. These are the same ones that I've had since Christmas from Amazon. You guys know I absolutely love these. So I picked a music sheet and then I also got these cute little Peter Rabbit stamps from Amazon that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to use some of my archival ink and I'm going to stamp these three little sleeping bunnies onto my music sheet. Then all I had to do was just cut that down and add this to my frame. Of 
For this next simple project, I found these adorable wood bunnies at my thrift store and I actually found them at different times, separate times that I went there, but I thought they were really adorable together so I wanted to make these into a pair. Now as you can see, the blue one definitely not my style and of course the white one needed a good cleaning and a couple coats of paint. So for both of these, I'm just using some of my Waverly white chalk paint and the white one I did two coats and for the blue one I ended up doing about three to four coats on that one. And as you can see, once I painted them, they were already looking so much better, but I definitely wanted to do a really simple design on these. These are actually the stencils that I got from Amazon that I used on my mirror makeover. And I am gonna use these stencils and the color Warm Buff from Apple Barrel to add some little designs all over these bunnies. Now, as you can tell, these bunnies are awkward shapes which makes it a little bit difficult to do stencils on here because they do have legs and the smaller one has arms that I had to work around. So I just used pretty much all three of these stencils and kind of flipped them and turned them to fit the way that I wanted to. And the great thing about this craft treat stencil is that once you flip it around or flip it upside down, you can actually line up the stencil to match with the previous stencil that you did when it was flipped over. So when I moved on to my larger bunny, it was super easy to line these up and make the stencils match. And I think both of these bunnies turned out really cute and go together so well now. For this next project, I'm actually just using a scrap piece of drop cloth that I've had in my stash. I always have a ton of drop cloth from projects that I do in my house, so this was just a piece I had left over. And I was going to use that little square wood block that I got from Dollar Tree. In the end, I actually decided to change that up, and you'll see that in a minute. But I am going to be using this really adorable bird stamp that I got from Amazon. On, and I'm just going to cut down a piece of my drop claw to fit that stamp and then I frayed the edges a little bit and again I'm going to be using some of my archival ink to stamp this piece of drop cloth. And I'm just making sure that I am pressing this down really nicely so that I can get all those little details onto the fabric. And here is where I decided to change out the piece of wood. The original Dollar Tree piece of wood was more square and I needed a rectangular piece for this. So this piece is actually also from Dollar Tree and I didn't like the color so I just dry brushed some white paint over it and then grabbed four of these gold thumbtacks that I also picked up at Dollar Tree and I'm just pushing these in a little bit because I'm going back in right here with some of my gold rub and buff and I am just antiquing those before pushing them in. For this project, I'm using this little bunny mold that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure it's for cakes or something like that, but I thought this would be a really cute trinket dish. So I grabbed some of my air dry clay and I'm going to knead that around. And then I am rolling this out. I'm keeping it kind of still thick, but I'm rolling it out to fit into the bunny mold. Now it didn't have to fit perfectly. You'll see here it doesn't really fit perfect, but that's okay because I'm just going around and shaping and molding this clay until I get it shaped how I want it and down into this mold. 
Once I have it shaped the way I wanted to, then I just went back over it with my rolling pin to kind of smooth out everywhere that I had been pressing and pushing and kind of messing up the clay. And then I was able to just flip this over and pull it out. Now, of course, once I had it out, it needed some shaping. So I am taking some water and putting it on my fingers and I'm kind of pinching those edges upward. I'm also using that water to smooth out anything that I didn't get with my rolling pin to smooth all those edges out. Just make sure if your clay starts to feel a little bit sticky, you just re-wet your fingers and you can keep doing this for as long as you want. The clay takes a while to dry and as long as your fingers are staying wet, you're not really going to mess it up. If you have any cracks or any little areas of imperfection, you can also use this technique. But like I said, I'm just using this water and kind of pinching those edges to make a little lip on this trinket dish. You'll also see I'm using that water and rubbing over the top of the bunny head and I'm kind of pushing that downward as I'm making this so that the trinket dish is a little deeper than those edges if that makes sense. And again you can just keep doing this until you're happy with it. For me I didn't mind if it wasn't perfect. I kind of wanted it to look old and handmade so it's not going to be perfect. You can of course make this as perfect as you want. Once I was pretty happy with the trinket dish, I'm grabbing these letter stamps that I got from Amazon and I wanted to spell out hop across the bunny head. I was going to use my little acrylic block, but then I didn't want the block to mess up the edges, if that makes sense. So I just did this one at a time with the letters. And then I just set this aside to dry overnight. You can see this is what it looked like the next day. And I thought it was kind of cute that it still had the little bunny face on the bottom of it. Now I did go back in with a fine grit sandpaper and just kind of go over the edges a little more. Anything that I didn't smooth out too good with my fingers and the water, this just will smooth that right out. And after I sanded everything down, then I went in with some of my white chalk paint and just did one light coat over this just because the clay is more of an off-white color. So I wanted it to be white. And then, of course, I had to add a little bit of gold to this. It's totally optional, but I just used my European gold rub and buff and went over all of those top little edges. For this next project, I'm using this little wood sign that I got from Dollar Tree. It says home sweet home on it. And I'm actually going to be using the back of this because it was already distressed perfectly. But I did want to cover up the home sweet home just to make this nice and cohesive. So I ended up giving this side of it two coats of my white chalk paint. And like I said, I did want to actually use the back side of this. You can see it's already nice and distressed. And I'm going to be using this really cute bunny and floral stamp that I got from Amazon with some of my archival ink. And I'm just going to place that right onto this side of the wood block. And this stamp actually fit this wood block perfectly. As you can see, it turned out super cute. But of course, for a final little touch, I'm adding in one of these Dollar Tree crystal knobs. And I did go in with a little bit of my European gold rub and buff and change out that silver little piece on the knob to make it gold. Then I was able to just drill down in the center of the top of this and add the knob.
For this project, we are going to be using this adorable little teapot that I got from my thrift store. And I started out by giving this a light spray coating of my Rust-Oleum spray paint just to kind of work as a primer for this. And then I went back over it with two coats of my white chalk paint. Now I found this little vintage cookie cutter at my thrift store and I thought it was super cute. So I'm going to be using that with some of my air dry clay to make kind of a little crockery stamp for this teapot. So I grabbed a, a large ball of clay and I'm just going to knead that around a little bit. Then I rolled that out just big enough for the little cookie cutter. Then I just kind of pushed it down into the clay and wiggled it around a little bit to leave the impression and I used this other little round cookie cutter to cut that out and once I had it cut out I just worked my way around the edges and made sure that they were all nice and smooth then I just used some Dollar Tree gel super glue to attach this to the front of my teapot And I went back in with some of my white chalk paint and painted over that clay piece so that it would match the teapot. And finally, to bring out some of those details and add some aging, I'm going in with some of my European Gold Rub and Buff and my stenciling brush. And I'm just rubbing this all over the bunny. And then I also added some to the teapot, especially around the rim and the top part of the spout. I'm going to be using two of these wood ribbon spools I had. I've just had these laying around and thought these would be super cute for this project. I'm also going to be using this little leaping bunny. I just traced this out from my computer onto a piece of cardstock and then cut that out. To make the bunny, I grabbed a large ball of clay and I'm just going to kind of knead that around in my hand and then I'm going to start rolling that out. But I do want that to be super thick so you can see here I rolled it out and then I kind of flipped it into itself. Then I will roll it just a little bit more, just enough for that bunny piece to fit on. Then I just laid my bunny template on top of my clay and I'm going to use a little box cutter to cut that out. Once I had it all cut out, I am taking a little bit of water on my finger and going over all of those edges and anywhere that there were a little bit of imperfections in the clay. And this is just going to help smooth all of that out. And if you ever notice any cracks in your clay as it's drying, you can also use the same technique with adding a little bit of water to your finger and just smoothing out any cracks in the clay. Before I set my bunny aside to dry, I am going to take these skinny little dowels that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and make my holes in the underside of my bunny. I want these to kind of go at an angle and I'm doing this really slowly so I don't crack my clay. Then once I have my holes made, I can set this aside to dry. And here I'm just working on those spools and the dowel rod that I'm going to be using. I'm just mixing up a little bit of my burnt umber paint with some water and I'm going to stain the spools and also that dowel piece. I let the bunny dry overnight and here I'm just going in with a fine grit sandpaper and I'm sanding over all of those edges making sure everything is nice and smooth. And while I was doing this I decided my bunny needed a little bit of detail on it so I'm using this Tim Holtz stencil and some of my Dollar Tree spackling and I'm just gonna rub this spackling all over that stencil to give the bunny a little bit of nice detail. Then I'll just go back in with my spatula and remove anything that went over the edges. 
Then to put this all together, I'm cutting that dowel rod down. I'm just cutting off two pieces that are equal heights and I'm gonna drill down into the center of my spool so that I can just slip this dowel rod down into there. And I just used a little bit of my Gorilla Glue Gel Super Glue to attach the dowel rods up into the bunny and down into the spools. This next project is inspired by something I saw from Martha Stewart. She made a little egg moss topiary tree and I really wanted to try it. So I picked up some of Dollar Tree styrofoam eggs, one of their styrofoam cones, this little dish from my local thrift store, and then I also picked up one of these round comb looking styrofoam pieces from Dollar Tree as well. But to start, I went ahead and ripped off all of the little hanging pieces from those styrofoam eggs. Then I mixed a little bit of my white chalk paint with some of my Apple Barrel Antique White. And I'm gonna use some skewers to hold these eggs while I'm painting them. I just found that this works so much easier than trying to hold on to the eggs while you're painting them. So I'm just sticking the eggs eggs one on each end of the skewer and painting all of these with just one coat of this paint. I really didn't care if some of that color was showing through. They were just a little bright for me. So while those eggs are drying, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my cone. I'm just hot gluing the cone to that little round piece really quickly. And then I'm taking some of this Dollar Tree Spanish moss and green moss, and we're going to cover this entire cone with that. Now for the first layer of moss, I'm using the green moss and working with moss can be super messy, especially with hot glue. So the best way I found to do this was just add a whole bunch of hot glue and then take huge clumps in your hand of the moss and just stick it down to it and then shake off any excess so that you could see any places you needed to add more to. And this just seemed to work out best for me. Now, once I had the moss covered, then I was able to just go in and hot glue my eggs to the little tree. And once I have all of my eggs glued down, that's when I'm gonna take that that Spanish moss and I'm just going to cut a bunch of pieces and hot glue it all in between those eggs and covering up anything and making this look like the eggs and the moss are just part of the tree. And finally for this project, I wanted to add a little topper on here. So I'm just using one of these glass knobs from Dollar Tree. For this next project, we're going to be using some scrap drop cloth that I already had on hand and we're going to be making a little tote bag, but I also had these cute little bunny stencils that I got from Amazon. So I'm going to be using this larger, taller one for this project. So I started by folding over my drop cloth and then cutting down those two pieces in the size that I wanted. And then I wanted the top part to be more clean and look like it was sewn. So I'm just folding over both of those top edges. And I'm just using some of my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks for this part. Then once I had those top edges finished, I was able to glue three sides together, just leaving that top part open. And I'm using my Aileen's Fabric Fusion to do this part. But you could totally use hot glue if you want it. Once my glue was dry, I was able to turn this right side out. And here I am taping down that bunny stencil. And then I'm using a small brush and some of my black chalk paint. And I barely 
barely have any paint on my brush as I'm doing this. I didn't want this to be super dark. I kind of wanted it to look stamped on here. So I'm patting my brush off as I'm doing this. Now you may have noticed that I accidentally stenciled that little piece of grass that's on the stencil. Right there you can see it. So I ended up having to add another little piece of grass just to make it look like it was on purpose. Now once my bunny was dry, I also wanted to add in some grain sack stripes to this. So I'm just using painter's tape and I made my own little lines. I did a skinny line closest to the bunny on both sides with that painter's tape. And then I'm taking some more painter's tape and beside the skinny lines, I will add in a larger line. And I'm just doing my lines with some Waverly chalk paint in the color moss green. And finally, to finish this off, I just needed to make a handle for the tote bag. So I'm just cutting down a piece of that drop cloth that I had left over. And I am folding in one of the edges just to give this a nice clean look. Then all I had to do was glue that handle to the inside of my bag. And I'm just adding some hot glue right in the inside where the corners meet and wrapping these handles around those pieces. are going to be making a super easy leaping bunny painting. I've seen these vintage bunny paintings all over the internet and they're super expensive so I figured I could make my own. Now I grabbed a 16 by 20 canvas from Walmart. It was just a few dollars and I mixed up a little bit of brown paint with white paint to make a creamy tan color. And you see here, I also have a jar of water and that's because I'm doing a wet acrylic painting. This is just super, super easy and I'm keeping my brush wet as I'm painting this whole canvas with that creamy tan color. If you notice your brush getting dry, just dip it back into that water. Now with this canvas still wet from the tan paint, I have some moss green, burnt umber, and a little bit of white paint here. And I'm using that same brush. I didn't rinse it out or anything. I'm just going in with some of that moss color and the water and we're going to make the grass part. And again, like I said, I am keeping my brush wet and I'm doing a bad out maybe a quarter of the way up the canvas with this grass and once I get my green color down I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of burnt umber and again water blending it into that grass. Now in the end, I do end up darkening my grass a little bit with less water and more paint just because once I get the bunny on here, it looked a little uneven for the painting. You'll see the bunny's going to be a lot darker. So I do darken that grass up a little bit at the end. But right here, I'm just adding in a little bit more of that tan color. And I'm really just mixing and blending the paint colors until I'm happy with it. I even go back in and add some of that burnt umber and again this is all with a wet paintbrush so that it just blends really nice and evenly. Now I let that canvas dry completely and right here I traced out a little vintage looking leaping bunny from my computer onto some parchment paper and I really tried to make sure that I drew in the details on that as well so I wouldn't forget. And then these are carbon papers that I got from Amazon. I got a pack of I think 200 of these for like $8 and you can reuse them a couple of times but you just want to make sure that the shiny black part is facing down and then these carbon papers also come with little tools that you can use right here and all you have to do is just trace over 
over whatever you want to transfer and the carbon paper transfers it onto the canvas. Now I use this because I cannot draw at all but if you can draw you could totally just draw your own rabbit you could see this is what it looks like when i was finished and then i'm just able to go in and paint this now to paint the bunny i'm using some smaller brushes and these are damp but they are not super wet and then i am going in using those same paint colors i only used four paint colors on this and i'm painting my bunny with with that burnt umber and I'm just going in and painting most of this bunny with the burnt umber except for right around the face. Now at this point I'm not worried about any of the details that I'm going to add to the bunny. You just want to get it filled in and make sure you cover those pencil marks from tracing the bunny. And for the front paws I went in with a smaller brush to do more detail because those front legs were a little skinny and so I had to go in with that smaller brush and I used that same small brush to do the eyes and the ears then I switched back to the brush I used to fill in the bunny and this is that tan cream color that we used on the background I just went in with that color on his belly to do the underside and then his tail a little bit some on the back paws and a little bit on the front legs as well and as I'm doing this I'm also taking some of that burnt umber a little bit of water and just blending it all in now here for that top part of his head I mixed up a little bit of that tan color with a little more of that burnt umber and again using some water some more of that burnt umber just kind of blending this all in and I do want to mention as I'm doing this I do have my computer screen open with the inspiration of the bunny so I'm pretty much just following those colors and right here I'm kind of starting to do a little bit of the outlining where any of the lines were on the inspiration that's what I'm doing right here changing any of the colors a little bit you really just can't go wrong with this you can change the colors as much as you want if you mess up somewhere you can always paint over it and just start over but you can totally see the shape of the bunny coming out right now and once I finished painting everything and it looked kind of the way I wanted I'm going back in with some crayons now I have white which I'm gonna do under the belly and I also have a brown color and burnt sienna which I'm gonna add to the bunny's fur this is gonna give it a ton of texture and different shadows and tones now I also had gray but I ended up not using gray and pulling out a black and the black I use to do the outline and any lines on the bunny. I also added some white under his chest and all across the bunny as well. And this just pulled out a bunch of different colors and tones and texture. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed these Easter DIY ideas. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.